Hi there. Let's paint. Well, I'll, I'll paint. You can watch or something. So today I'm going to paint another portrait. I'm going to be using this reference. Uh, it's a pretty desaturated reference. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the colors. Um, I may not use a lot of the information that's here, but uh, let's see how this goes. I haven't made any um, decisions in advance here. So uh, as far as the colors and everything, I'm thinking I'm going to be using... Hmm, I'm not sure. Let's see here. Let's just get some primaries out here. Uh, I've been enjoying this lately. This is a transparent white, a little gentler than a titanium white. It doesn't um, overpower your mixtures too much. I'm just going to put uh, my old standby, standby of uh, primary colors out, and that's going to be Indian yellow. Naphthal red. Let's see if I can find that here. And phthalo blue. So today I'm going to be painting on a unprimed sheet of aluminum. I've sanded it lightly so that it has a little bit of tooth. Oil paint likes to stick to, to uh, most surfaces. People even paint on glass without much problem. So I figure it will stick to this aluminum okay. I've got my brushes sitting in some uh, walnut oil in this homemade um, pickle barrel. It's got a piece of mesh screen at the bottom. And I just use that to rinse out the pigment when it gets too loaded in the brush or I want to make big color changes. Otherwise I just squeeze out the paint with my fingers on this paper towel. So I'm going to mix up a just a dark color here using a little bit of everything. I like the Indian yellow because it's transparent, so it doesn't lighten my mixtures. A little bit of a little bit of walnut oil in there just to help it flow a little bit. And just getting a a few proportions and gestures in. Just very, very loose. It was just, just a, a framework. Nothing on here is going to be accurate to the end. So now I need to make some decisions about the color of the shadow versus the color in the light. I've been enjoying cool, cool lights, so I'm going to make the light cooler than the shadow. Just starting with this black here, I'm going to mix up a warm shadow tone. Warm just being on the um, the side of the color wheel towards reds and oranges and yellows. Let's make that warmer. This is just, um, again, this is like a color framework. These, these are all going to be modified and changed, and I'm going to pick out different areas that are going to get different hues and different colors. Not all the shadows are going to be the same exact color because the skin changes from area to area and light reflects into different shadows, changing the colors. And I'm going to use the same shadow tone to start from, and I'm going to lighten it up. Now just adding white to a color will make it cooler, but I want this to be even cooler than that. 
So I'm going to add a touch of blue and a touch, just a touch of yellow. And let's go from there. Taking some red here because there's some areas that I want to pop with um, a little bit of local color warmth. There's going to be some warm in the cheeks and warm in the nose. And maybe just a little bit on the chin. But the rest of it can go pretty green and blue. So there's just an idea of, of the colors that I'd like to go with, the relationships between the colors in light and shadow. The light is making the skin lighter and cooler and the shadows are making the skin darker and warmer in relation to each other. So those same relationships should be carried to the other elements beside the skin like the hair and the shirt. The shirt's going to have a warmer shadow and a cooler light as will the hair. So I'm not just filling in here, I'm actually refining the drawing, carving back into some areas. I like the, um, the color that I initially put in, this kind of greenish black for the, um, for the light in the hair. That's a good complement, I think, to the warmer purple reddish color that I've been putting in the shadow. So the shirt is a white shirt. Oh, I'm going to leave it a white shirt. I can, you can make it whatever color you want because we're, we're not being a slave to the reference. Remember that the um, shadow on white fabric is going to be pretty light. It's going to be the, the, the shadow of the shirt is going to be lighter than the shadow of the skin because the, in this case the, the shirt is lighter than the skin. I'm making some de decisions about um, the directions of my brush strokes as they relate to the um, the forms. Like uh, in the reference, if you can see the, the fabric folds in certain ways, but that's not necessarily the form that I'm following. I'm following across the arm right now. I'll go in with the folds later, but I'm mostly trying to go across the forms to get the, the roundness of it at least in my mind, just to get the groundwork in for the brush strokes. On to the cooler, lighter white.
breaking up these uh, shadow forms and, and um, looking for areas where they transition softly into the light. The forehead is a very big sort of round form, so the transition from light to shadow is going to be stretched out. So I'm noticing in the reference um, some fill light that's sort of coming from above and hitting the surfaces that are pointed more upwards, like the shadow side of her nose, the shadow side of the upper lip, the cheekbone, the forehead. So I'm going to try to get some of that into this painting as well. I'm going to use a pretty cool color, and this is going to spill into the warm shadows. And I want the value to be just slightly lighter than the previous shadow color that I had. It's still going to be uh, darker than the lights by far. There's also a little bit of cool reflected light coming into the shadow here. I leave my seat for 10 minutes. So friends, pals, buddies, while this section is speeding along and I've pretty much clammed up on the narration, I wanted to say that what I've been talking about here, the warms and cools in the shadow and light, are just concepts. They're just some things I think about when I'm painting, not rules. They're not even surefire ways to help you make your art. When I was a kid, I had a Rubik's Cube. I could get the colors right on one side, but that was about it. I thought you had to be a super genius to understand how it was scrambled and reverse the order of moves exactly to unscramble it. Chums, there are 43 quintillion possible combinations of a Rubik's Cube. That's a 43 with 18 zeros behind it. You can't reverse the order of scramble to solve the cube. Looking at Rembrandt or Bouguereau, one could be overwhelmed by the genius of the technique and artistry. And rightly so. It's almost unfathomable how they could arrive at their masterpieces. Like the 43 quintillion expressions of the Rubik's Cube, we each have our own unique perspective and experience from the 107 billion people who have lived on this planet. Bouguereau isn't Rembrandt. And here's the thing, solving the cube isn't the goal. Or rather, solving the cube isn't the end goal. Maybe you want the cube to look like this, or this. In this rather messy analogy, the solved cube, each side having one color, represents the fundamentals, an academic study showing knowledge of proportion, light and color, a cube drawn in three-point perspective, basic and understandable to all who look at it. To get to the solved cube, you need to learn a few sequences or algorithms. These algorithms work regardless of which of the 43 quintillion scrambles you are starting from. Likewise, learning the fundamentals will get you to a competent artwork. Now what do cube solvers do once they learn how to solve? They learn to do it faster. They learn new moves and techniques to solve faster and faster until they can solve in under 15 seconds. You may also see people pursuing art 
who get fixated on fundamentals, striving to perfect all the little things that make an artwork objectively correct and pleasing to look at. And that's fine if you want to do that. Not for me, and maybe not for you. Your artistic expression may look like two sides of a cube solved with the rest in seeming disarray. And frankly, I have no idea how to tell you to get there. It may be easier to get there from a fully solved cube, but it may also be quite possible to get there from whatever scramble you start from without first solving. So like I said, anything I present here are just concepts that have worked for me in the past. I may even move on from these techniques or ideas. I have before, and I'll do it again. So this is about as far as I think I'm going to be taking this painting. I, I got a little too fiddly with the uh, small brush in here, and I don't want to do any more of that. Thoughts on painting on the aluminum. It is a little bit slippery. Um, when I was trying to go back into the, the shadows and the darks with uh, other colors, it was very difficult to get it to um, stay down. It would, it would pull up a lot more than it was putting down. Um, which is not a problem I have on, on a primed surface. So uh, maybe sanding with a larger tooth sandpaper on this, getting it a little bit more roughed up might help. But I, I do enjoy the, the metal showing through. Um, I ended up just using the, the uh, bare aluminum for the background. So comrades, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, consider supporting me on Patreon, like these kind people. Take care of yourself, and thanks for watching.